you're gonna have the balls to stand in front of somebody and speak your heart, say some shit that's fucking interesting. I grew up in a trailer park and there's a bunch of outcasts, but there was a very strong sense of community. If someone gets a new thing, we're all coming over. It's our win. The confines of being poor and growing up in a neighborhood like that, it really forced me to want to create. And I think that's where it all came from in me. My childhood is a little different. It's uh, better. He's gonna make me say, I lived in a town called Celebration, Florida, which was built by Disney in the 90s. That's you right. Know. It's a perfect town. It's not a perfect town. Designed to be Perfect. I had a friend in middle school. He tells me, you need to check out this band. Made my mom drive me to the mall. I make her buy me System of a Down. So we get in the car and she's like, all right, let's hear it. So we put it on. Immediately, she's like, this is garbage music. <laughs> she pulls into a Best Buy. She says, listen, if you want to listen to like heavy music, we're going to get you better heavy music. She buys ACDC, Ozzy, Osbourne. When she was yeah. younger, those were heavier bands. I fell in love. So then I got back into guitar. I started meeting kids at school and we would play covers like in my garage. My stepfather passed away and I moved to the suburbs of Virginia. It was like the first time I saw that many normie ass muggle white people and I was like this is crazy like they don't know that I'm like dirty that I used to steal from 7-Eleven. I'm with all these rich kids. I was recording demos. They were maybe 30 seconds each. Take it to school. I start selling it. It's literally horrible. I think my seven-year-old sister played keyboard on one of them and I got like really addicted to giving people the songs that I was writing. I start putting covers on YouTube. Somebody reached out to me. Hey our singer just quit. We're on Warp Tour selling CDs right now. Would you be interested in like flying out to us and trying out for our band? We love your voice. I was like sure. Where do you live? He's like Virginia. I said crazy. So do I. He said where do you live? I said here. He said we're five minutes up the street. Do you want to come by tonight and audition for the band? So I go over there. I'm reading lyrics off the sheet of paper and they're like yeah you want to be in the band. And that was broadside. And I write this song called Old Bums. We record it for 200 bucks. We cold call email every PR firm we know. The next morning I'm at work, somebody sends me an article on Instagram and they were like, dude, you're on Alt Press Japan. From there, then of course, Alt Press picked it up. Record labels find it out. We pitch it to a couple people. One le record label finds this interesting. They have us come out to Chicago. We have $13 to our name. We leave that trip with a record deal. We got signed at the same time. Both of our signing tours, we toured together. Our albums come out on the same day. Same day. I didn't know that our album was gonna suck and their album yeah. was gonna be huge. The only people that were coming to the shows were to see y'all. Yeah. Nobody was coming to see us. That was the last tour that Old Again ever went on because it was so miserable. So it was like all coming together for me. I was like, this is all I've ever dreamed about. We do Warped Tour and it blows us the fuck up. I move out to LA and we record Paradise. I wanna be famous at this point. I wanna get addicted to cocaine. I wanna do crazy orgies all the time. But like, he did I not. But he I did didn't not. do he any wanted, of that. That's what I wanted. At this point, we haven't had enough band members stay strong enough to build that camaraderie. So I'm doing everything, being the tour manager and singing in the band. It is kind of a shock as an artist in a young band to get your first big tour. They had a team and a crew and we did not have a crew. We, we had, had us. five of us. My ego was put in check. This was my first tour this, with the band. I was just whoa, happy to be there. I was like, huge crowd. I was like, I've never seen this many people in one place ever in my entire life. And I was like in a major depression at this point. I've been running for so long that I'm afraid of what happens if I stop. I'm afraid that nobody actually likes me and that I've just been lucky my entire 32 years of living. Is success to you just stability? Does it all stem from your childhood? Oh, 100%. My mom and dad used to beat the fuck out of each other and like, I only really knew it was an okay environment when we were like joking. I don't understand why I was forced to endure pain, but I do know how to navigate getting out of those spaces when they really start to consume who Oliver should be, not who Oliver is. I decide that I want to keep doing this band. Who am I to like let fans of the band and the band down? Jeff, our drummer, was showing me some demos and I'm like, this is cool. I'd never written with him before. I start singing over it. I'm like, this is cool. I'm hitting different ranges. I'm putting in different efforts. Dom writes this song. It's called The Raging Sea on the album. This is like 
everything I've ever wanted to sing on. It's like what I wanted my band in 12th grade to be. I said, I'm a musician through and through, let's do this shit. I pulled myself out of depression, we recorded the album. We come out, one week after that, I read online that Victory Records is being sold. One month goes by, the people buying the company call me and say, hey, we're buying you, but we don't have any place for you because we're not a label. I say, okay, I don't know what's going on. What's happening to me? What is everything I've known up to this point? <laughs> Three and a half months go by, they call me and they go, all right, Oliver, okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're just going to give you that third record. Best of luck to you. We get a completely free record. We were in disbelief in December of 2019. We had done literally the biggest tour of our career. We had started to see what 2020 was shaping up to be for us. The full year booked, and we had this album coming out. March 2020, we all flew to LA to record the music videos. I get on the plane to come back home. Three days later, our entire country says, we're gonna go on a lockdown. It was a very rude awakening to yeah. show that no matter how hard you work, out of your control, everything can yeah. kind of get taken away from you. You find a success in your day, like knowing that a song that you wrote has impacted somebody. That is what success is to me, but I do not feel it in my sparring court. We put out that record, by the time we play it live, those fans are gonna be two years older than they were. And you can't recreate that magic. You just hope that your name resonates with people. I don't believe we can change like the season, but